What's up guys, welcome back to another video in the perspective series. So what we're gonna be covering today is isometric perspective. So before I get into that and all the explaining stuff, really quick, if you can see this grid on the screen, um, I did provide a link to this exact grid that I'm going to be using today. So please click that link, it'll take you right to the image. You can print it out, you can just save it and blow it up on your screen and place your paper on your screen if you have the ability to do that, if you're working on a laptop or something, um, or if you have a digital program you can you know also just like i did put it onto your digital program put it onto its own separate layer and we're going to be drawing on top of it we're going to need some sort of grid today if for whatever reason you don't like the grid that i provide and you want to go look for your own you know i love pinterest as my source for images you can go in type in isometric perspective grid and anything like this where it's just a grid of lines going vertical and diagonal. You want three points of access. So you got diagonal, diagonal, and up and down. That's the kind of grid that you're gonna to wanna to look for here. You can look for bigger ones, you can look for smaller ones, whatever you feel fits the best for you. But either way, it's gonna get you pretty much the same results. And I'm gonna explain now what exactly is isometric perspective and why is it different than regular perspective? So not to get too technical here, but let's just go over definitions, right? So maybe this can kind of give us a clear division of what the two differences between the two are. Normal perspective, which is what we've learned in the videos in the past, the definition is the art of drawing solid objects on a two-dimensional surface, which would be your paper, um, so as to give the right impression of their height, width, depth, and position in relation to each other when viewed in a particular point. So what this is saying is that in normal perspective, whether you're doing one point, two point, three point, whatever it is, here I have a one point picture. You are using your 2D surface, which is your paper, right? So, you know, the white surface that I'm drawing on right now, and you're creating something visually that shows depth. It shows the height, the width, and how deep the object goes, right? So it's essentially how do you draw something that visually appears to be 3D without actually showing something in 3D, right? I have a flat surface and I need to demonstrate to you that it's in 3D. Now, what perspective tells us is things vanish, right? They go to that vanishing point, okay? Just like you can see in this picture. The thing with, the, with perspective is, let's say that this is a 20 foot building, right? So we can say 20 feet. And even though this line in the background, I drew the interior of the, the rectangle here, even though that line appears to be smaller and physically is smaller, what perspective is telling me is that visually, this is also 20 feet. It's smaller because it's disappearing into the background, which is what's helped creating that depth. It's what makes the object look like it's farther away from me. Just like if I were to run in the opposite direction from you, I would become smaller and smaller and smaller compared to someone standing right next to you. So isometric perspective, and this definition can seem a little wordy, I promise I'm gonna explain it, but this is the difference. A type of visual perspective, so again, relates to drawing, in which all dimensions parallel to the three principal spatial axes are shown in their true proportions. What the heck does that mean? That sounds so complicated. Well, let's break it down very simply. So the three points of axes that it's talking about is you're gonna have your diagonal going one way, your diagonal going the other way, and then your straight vertical up and down. These are your only three points of axis in order to represent 3D depth, height, and width, okay? So we don't have to worry about lines vanishing to any sort of a point. Now, when it says parallel, you guys can see these lines are what, you know, they're paralleling each other. They're not converging, they're not getting closer, they're not going off to a vanishing point like I just said, right? They are equal distant from each other, no matter how far or long the picture you're going or whatever you're drawing goes. So what does this mean practically? What this means practically is that we're not dealing with things that are going away to a distance anymore. It's a different type of thinking. It's almost a more technical kind of perspective. So the simplest way to think about it is if I'm gonna make a box, <clears throat> okay? And let's say that this box is gonna be two squares, two squares, 
two, two, okay? Equal on all sides, right? Now, if I was gonna make a box over here, from what we learned in perspective, the idea would be <clears throat> that that box would be smaller. But because we're drawing an isometric perspective, the box over here is still going to be the same size as the box over there. So we're still drawing in 3D, but we're taking out the idea of the vanishing point, which leads our lines to the back and has things merging and getting smaller. But we're just simply thinking almost like a top-down view with this kind of drawing. To better explain this, let me show some visual examples. So if you guys read the description where I said, you know, think of like an Ikea how-to book on how to build your desk or something, isometric perspective is often used in what's called technical illustrations. So this would be, you know, it looks like some sort of computer part to me, right? So what we have here in order to visually show what's going on here, how everything fits and all that stuff, the illustrator who was trying to demonstrate to whatever company that they were selling this to or, or whoever asked them to do this, they don't need to have these lines converging into some realistic perspective. It can look a little off sometimes if you look up technical illustrations and sometimes not having perspective, especially after learning perspective, can look a little funny. But the way I like to think about it is you're looking at something so close up, like this little part that's probably pretty tiny, and it's so close to you that the idea of it having a harsh vanishing point or skewed lines because of the vanishing point is not technically realistic. So to me, this kind of fits better if I was to be looking at a part from this kind of an angle. Now, technical illustration might not seem very entertaining. That might have seemed kind of boring and maybe not in your ballpark at all, but this is also used for other things. This is also used for architectural blueprints and diagrams, right? So this is a house where it's clearly drawn. You can see the grid in the background it's drawn in isometric perspective. And this is just to kind of give whoever's going to be taking on the project of this house, the visual idea of what this house is, how big it is, because each one of these squares can represent something like a square inch, a square foot, maybe a square mile, whatever the unit of measurement and how big the object you're drawing relates to. So it's another easy way to kind of show physical distance within your drawing that represents to the real world, whereas opposed to perspective in terms of one point, two point, that's more of showing the visual representation of something disappearing into the background, which is something that looks really beautiful. It looks realistic, but it wouldn't help someone such as a builder. So here we have a diagram of what this is often used for, which is interior design. Um, you know, we have two bathrooms here, but this is used for anything from bedrooms, living rooms, kitchens, whatever it is that you're trying to represent to a client, perhaps. Maybe it would help you to just draw out your bedroom and you want to reimagine or redesign your bedroom with the furniture you have. And this could be one way to do it without lugging your furniture all around. These guys exist on the same grid, right? We have our diagonal this way, we have our diagonal this way, and then our straight up and down. Exact same grid that I have provided for you guys in the description. This is particularly what we're gonna be going over today in my illustration. So if you're gonna follow along with me, I'm gonna do something very similar to this, but I'm gonna do kind of like a top-down view of my bedroom. But there's one more example that you guys might find more exciting that isometric perspective is also used for. So if you guys are familiar with video games in any way, I am sure that you know about the Pokemon series that is usually on the handheld consoles, as well as, of course, you know, Zelda games of the past and any kind of top down adventure story video game. These games are actually called isometric games, and it's because they exist on a grid, which you can visually see, you know, right here, right? And you know it's isometric because this floor panel, which is closest to me, is the same exact size as this floor panel that is away from me, right? We're not getting any kind of skew of perspective. You know, this lake is not going off this way or anything like that. Everything is even, it's parallel. It's what we'd call isometric perspective. So hopefully this kind of gives you an idea of what isometric perspective can be used for. It can be used for technical things. It can be used for interior design. It can be used for video games. It's a simple way to show environment, interiors, exteriors, whatever it is, and you don't have to worry about the idea of a vanishing point and stuff like that. However, when it comes to things of showing depth in a picture, it is kind of lacking in that way, but it does help to give us an overall understanding of what kind of dimensions we have going on. All right, so now the practical side of the video, right? So now we're gonna draw something you guys, if you printed out the grid and you have it ready to go on whatever you're going to use, 
please feel free to draw whatever you want. I am going to draw just kind of a loose definition of my bedroom. So, you know, if we remember the picture of the bathrooms here, we essentially have two walls that we're thinking about and then an open two walls that we're looking through essentially, right? My bedroom kind of follows the same principle. My bedroom is a square for the most part. So I can look at these guys and follow these principles to my particular bedroom. So what I'm gonna start with is I'm gonna start with the floor plan and I'm just gonna draw a square, which in this perspective plane is not gonna look like this, but it's gonna follow the diagonals and look something more like that. So maybe a diamond shape from where you're sitting, but you should be able to see that it's a square from a different perspective angle. I'm gonna find the floor and I'm gonna find the walls and I'll just kind of speed through that so you guys don't have to sit here as I draw super slowly on my clumsy little computer. So now I have the basic floor plan of, you know, a loose fitting of what my room is. I just kind of need to think about what angle I want to approach my room because obviously my room has four walls and I'm only going to see two of the walls. So which walls do I want to represent? Probably going to represent my desk where I'm sitting, which is somewhere around here. And my door would be here. I have a little shoe rack over here and then my closet space. And I can even draw my bed in somewhere over here. So these are the kind of things that I'm going to break down first. If you're drawing some sort of environment, maybe it's your living room, maybe it's your bathroom, you like the ba the pictures of the bathroom, maybe you want to kind of think of how you would redesign your bathroom or your kitchen. Maybe you want to draw your bedroom or maybe you're going to follow along with me and draw my bedroom. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to place these objects in using the grid and I'm just going to kind of go loose and make everything pretty blocky for now. If I want to come in and detail things later, I can. That's not really the point of this video. So let's just figure out the floor plan of my room for now.
All right, so I pretty much laid out everything in my room here. I have, you know, I have my desk, TV, uh, you know, my, my dresser, my door, shoe rack, bed, all that stuff. Um, and this stuff is all actually in my room. And then while I was drawing this, I was trying to think about how much space exists in between these things. My bed is pretty close to my closet. Um, so, so is my desk. My desk is also pretty close to my bed. I don't really have that big of a room, right? So I was trying to think of how does this stuff actually look if I were to be looking at it from this angle. And it helped me out quite a bit. Um, it's kind of cool to be able to see my room now from this technical illustration kind of point. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in and erase where these things are overlapping. I do want to point out that I was drawing through objects. So obviously where there's places like this wall of my closet, I wouldn't actually see this dresser thing that is inside my closet because the wall would obviously be you know, in front of it. So I want to go in, I want to think about what is overlapping what, what is in front of the other thing, and I'm going to go ahead and erase that. So if it's covering a corner of the wall, I'm going to erase that corner of the wall and you know, vice versa, and we're going to get a much more clean illustration. Alright guys, I could keep going into this and adding way more detail than I need to, but overall, we're going to call it here. So this is a basic overview of what my bedroom would look like in isometric perspective. Obviously I can keep going in and adding, you know, like the papers on my desk, my computer, the objects I have on my dresser, my blanket, my pillows on the bed, etc, etc. These are all things that we can do in isometric perspective, and it makes it pretty easy because it's less complicated to show scale and size because you don't have to think about things disappearing off to the background. You know, once I drew my floor and I drew my walls, I already had the con the confounds of what I could create in. I wasn't worrying about how far things went into the background, the distance between things, how realistically wide or narrow or something I was trying to show. It just kind of came down for me to think about the space that is between things. So like if I were to apply this to a bathroom picture, I would just kind of think, 
well, maybe how much space do I want between my sink and the toilet or something like that, right? So it's a really easy concept. All you need is this grid or some other sort of grid similar to this. You can find one with smaller boxes, bigger boxes, and you guys can just have fun with it. And you can create things and you can show to someone like maybe your parents or something and be like, look, I completely redesigned our bathroom using this style. And it could be something that could be accomplished at some point, which I think is pretty cool. So maybe not as fun or as dynamic or exciting as one point perspective, two point perspective, but also a pretty cool way to just kind of show something from a top up view. Um, this is used a lot in, you know, comics, illustration for setting up scenes and sets and stuff like that. Obviously, it's a very technical thing. The idea is that we get to, as artists, use our imaginations and make it a lot of fun. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope you have fun with this. Um, if you guys can send me some of those drawings, I want to see what you create. If you drew my room, show me it. I would maybe redesign my room for me. Look at the things I have in my room and where would you place them if you had the option to be my personal interior designer, right? All right, guys, as always, thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video.